one of the forms of discovery that you may have received is called a document request or a request for production of documents. Now, this request is designed to obtain or elicit from you uh, documents that you have that respond to certain questions. Here's something that's really important. When you have a document request, it is your burden as the person who's responding to this request to do their very best to find all documents that are responsive to the specific request. You can't just say, oh well, I can't find it, because if you, if you don't make an effort, you may never be able to use that document in the future at trial or some other form or arbitration, for example, because you didn't make the effort to get it to the other side. So if, if you receive a document request, what I need you to do first is read the request carefully. Understand what documents are being asked of you and then go out and search for those documents that you may have that are responsive to that request. You don't have to create documents. You're not, I'm not asking you to go out and, for example, if they ask you, do you have any pictures? If you haven't taken any pictures yet, you don't need to go take pictures. If you don't have a document, you don't need to go out and create a document. But if you have them at the time that you receive the document request, or you had them at some point previously, it's your responsibility to find those documents if they still exist. And then what I need you to do is as you go through each of the requests, I need you to identify that you have them or you do not have the documents. And then if you have them, attach a copy of those documents with your, res your responses that you're going to give back to our office. Now, some people think documents and they think paper. That's not the case because documents include all digital formats as well. So if you had emails, then you need to go and find those emails that are on your system to respond to the particular request. For example, let's say a document request says, I want all the communications between you and me, okay, who are plaintiff and defendant. So if you have emails that you sent to the other side, then those emails need to be downloaded and provided in the response. If you have emails from the other side to you and that's what's being asked, you need to download those responses. Even things such as text messages are actually documents under the evidence code. So it's important you look for those things. If you think you've already given them to us, that's fine. Let us know. We'll try to find them from the documents that you've given to us. But don't be lazy about this. This is so important. I can't, exp I can't explain enough or express, stress this enough. A document production must be adhered to as fully as possible. If you think the document exists but it's in somebody else's control, let's say medical, ex medical records for example, and you don't have those medical records in your control but you know that they're in your doctor's office then you identify that those records are in the doctor's office. Then we can advise the other side where to find those records. If you don't have the records and let's say they're with your mother or they're with a friend, then you need to tell us where those documents are. You need to identify what those documents are so that we know what we're going to be looking for. Once you're complete with all the requests, then you're going to sign a verification. That verification means this, that under oath, under penalty of perjury, you have done the following. You have made a reasonable and diligent search to find the records, and you have provided all the records that have been requested for which you have some document. Again, don't need to make them up. If you don't have them, you say you don't have them. But if you have them, had them, or know where you can find them, I need that information. Now, if you provide that information for me, it also helps me, not just the other side, but it helps me to know exactly the details of your case. So if you miss some documents, haven't provided, to them, provided those documents to us, and we find out later 
that they existed and they may have had a dramatic impact on your case, that could prove very negative to you in your case. I had a situation like that in trial. I don't want anyone to go through that situation where, where a client told me one thing, testified under oath to that thing, and then was impeached on the witness stand before the jurors with a document that showed that he was not telling the truth. Even if it's an innocent mistake, it can be blown up into look like a lie. And the most important thing in your case is your credibility about the facts of the case, about your injuries or damages, and, and all the details. Uh, so if you're credible by giving us the, everything, even if it hurts you, we can do a better job in pre minimizing that damage than being surprised like I was in that case at trial and not knowing how to respond. So get all your documents, get your responses, get them back to us in a timely fashion. Remember, I only have 30 days from the time I receive the document to get it to the other side. That means I need you to do your job within 15 days so I have plenty of time to review all the records. If I have objections to the records, I can make those objections and protect them and pre preserve them for your, your benefit. But if you don't give me enough time and we go past the deadline, we can waive our objections and some documents that might not otherwise go to the other side will have to be turned over regardless. If you have questions on how to respond to your document request, give us a call. We'll sit down with you and we'll help you through it.